Man, sometimes you forget all of the different hardware that Microsoft makes under the Surface tag, under the Surface headline. This one is actually one of my favorites. I have the previous version at my house. It gets a lot of use. They've upgraded the Surface Book. Now, it's a bit confusing, the naming, because when you hear book, you kind of think of a laptop. It folds over like a book. Apple calls their laptops the MacBook. Microsoft, on the other hand, calls their laptop the Surface Laptop, and the Surface Book is another thing entirely. In fact, you can't even really call it a laptop. Well, you could, but it's really a true convertible transformer type of thing, as the image on the front implies. It's one of the only full horsepower convertible setups that you can get. Dedicated graphics inside, battery life, i7 processors, the type of screen resolution you would want on a high-powered laptop. But yet, still, it can go into tablet mode, and the implementation here is very unique. The tablet mode isn't some sort of fold, although you, you can fold it into a sort of large tablet. The tablet mode is a complete detach of the screen unit, and I think that's why this thing gets use at my house, is because when you remove the screen, it's light enough to make sense as a tablet, well, you gotta pay for it, okay? That's that's the thing to consider. So you travel over to the website and the Surface Book 13 inch is starting at 1600 bucks. And when you step up to the 15 inch, which is what this unit in front of me is, the price goes up once again. But for your cash, you're getting dedicated NVIDIA graphics. This is a 10th gen Intel Core i7 inside. 512 gigs of storage, configurable up to two terabytes, 32 gigs of RAM, and the 15 inch comes with a GeForce GTX 1660 Ti with six gigabytes of graphics RAM. So now we're talking about gaming on a device that has a detachable screen. Now granted, you give up that GPU when you do detach the screen. So the screen detach portion, and I don't think this is gonna matter to most people, you do take a hit on the performance as a consequence but I think when you have the screen detached, you're in sort of more of a consumption mode. You're watching video. You're possibly, maybe you're drawing something because again, you can use the pen on this device, the same pen that you would use on the other Surface product, Surface Go, which I featured recently, or Surface Pro. The weight of the device, the 13 inch starts at 3.38 pounds. The bigger 15 inch is going to be 4.2 pounds. If you want the top tier graphics, you're gonna be looking at the 15 inch though. The 13.5 is configurable with up to a 1650 Max-Q with four gigabytes of video memory. It's hard to even find a comparable. I mean, there's plenty of awesome PC laptops, workstation and gaming laptops, but how many of them have the screen fully detached and how many of them have a hinge like this? This is the, the real transformer of the bunch as far as I'm concerned. So here is the laptop first. Also inside the package, we have some paperwork. And this is the charge brick. This has been upgraded from the previous version. This is now supplying, I believe, 127 watts of power. So there were some complaints on the previous model that under certain tasks, under a certain load, this thing could actually suck more battery than the brick was providing. That's not gonna be the case anymore with 127 watts. A nice thing Microsoft does as well on their chargers, they give you an extra USB port to charge a mobile device or really whatever you want. This is the same proprietary connector that works across Surface devices. You guys know I prefer USB Type-C wherever possible, but if you are gonna have a proprietary connector, whether it's the Surface connector or the old MacBook connector, the MagSafe, if you put a magnet in it, I will start to accept your proprietary nature because of the benefit of the kick proofness when somebody, if somebody were to trip over the cord, it pops out really easily. This will work with the Surface dial wheel type of thing. It will work with the Surface pen, as I mentioned previously, but you gotta buy that stuff extra on top of the cost. Ooh, and something that still kind of messes me up when I use this device at home, all the controls, power, volume, it's all on the display. And it, and it starts to make sense to you that it has to be here because you detach the thing and, and you wanna have access. The other thing you're going to see on the tablet portion up top here 
is a camera. Your speakers are on here as well. And there's even a headphone jack, believe it or not, on the tablet portion. Now on this side of the device, as you look at the bottom portion, you'll see a type C connector as well as your main charge connector. So the bottom of the unit has a battery in it. In fact, the bigger battery is in the bottom of the unit. Around 10 hours of battery life with the two of them connected, you'll take a battery hit when you're in tablet mode, but then you connect this back to the base and the base acts as like a battery bank, sort of. The base has your graphics card and your larger battery in it. And then on the other side of the device, you have two USB type A ports and an SD card slot. As you guys know, I talk a lot about the MacBook Pro because we use a number of them in the office. It's gotta be the biggest drawback is the fact that you need dongles. We talked about it as far as docks are concerned in order to bring back some of the ports that you might want. Those are the ports that I really feel like I'm missing. A USB type A port, even if it was just one, and then also an SD card slot. Now I should note there is one drawback here. The single type C connector on the right hand side of the unit does not support Thunderbolt 3, so it's gonna be a slightly slower connection. At this price point, you're probably gonna want something that supports Thunderbolt. This is not that. It's not, a USB 3.1 is fast, but it's not Thunderbolt fast. All right, so we crack it back open and you take a look at the deck right here. And this might be my favorite part of this laptop, the way that they've designed this. I called it a laptop. It's not a, it's a book. It's the Surface Book. Now, the reason I like this so much is because of how sturdy it is, the construction and material. They've got this magnesium thing going on. And I just love how on the side of the unit, there's this curve to it. It curves over the edge here. It's not just a straight, sharp edge. So when your hands are up here, anywhere near here, it's got this kind of soft, it's got a softness to it. Oh man, it's one, it's gotta be one of the best chiclet style keyboards that you can get on a laptop. And that's coming from a guy who, as you know, I've experimented with so many laptop keyboards. Big fan of the Lenovo X series keyboards. They're still my favorite, but if you're gonna go chiclet style, this is pretty much next in line. It is a backlit keyboard as well. You can see your dedicated keys along top for controlling the backlight, multimedia functions, and so on. And then this key is an important one up here. This is the thing you're going to click to actually detach the tablet portion, your screen portion from the entire body. Now, the other really unique thing, obviously, about this particular product is the hinge. It's, I'm sure it exists elsewhere, somewhere in industrial design, but this application is very uncommon. And in a space where people have pretty much determined what the standards are going to be. It is exciting to see any manufacturer take an alternative approach. When you have the thing completely folded, it, there's a bit of a gap there, as you can tell. So you're not getting the slimmest or trimmest package possible, but in exchange, you've got the transformer nature here, allowing for the detachable display. All right, so the device is booted up and the thing that strikes you right away compared to other laptops is the aspect ratio of the display. So as you can tell, it's taller than usual. And this is a popular choice for productivity. You get more vertical space. And also since it does pop off and become a tablet, tablets can be a bit awkward when they're too tall and narrow. So you can understand why they went with that choice. As far as the resolution is concerned, it's fairly high resolution. 3000 by 2000 for the 13.5 inch display. This one is the 15, so it's 3240 by 2160 or 260 PPI. This aspect ratio is three by two. I'm kind of a fan of this. I think when you've got it on your lap and you're doing work, your eye line for better ergonomics being up a little higher, or at least a portion of it being higher, the top of the display being higher, it could be a little bit more comfortable. Now, one of the drawbacks of this design is the fact that this thing can wobble a little bit. And the reason for that is because, well, the tablet portion is heavier than a display would be on its own. So the balance of weight here lives more on this side than it normally would. The base is very sturdy. It doesn't move or budge at all, but this hinge design coupled with so many of your components being in the display portion means that there's a little bit of wobble to it. This is not something you notice all that often when you use the device, but it's a bit jarring at first if you're used to a typical laptop. You're like, why is that? Why is the upper part wobbling there? Of course, the trade-off for a lot of buyers, people interested in this device uh, is worthwhile because now, I mean, let me just show you the magic trick real quick. So you hit this little button right here 
And you just go ahead and lift it up. And I have, I mean, my whole, it's a 15 inch, a 15 inch tablet, high resolution with potential pen input, obviously touch input as well. And it's light enough where you're not stressed out using it on the couch. This could be a very serious multimedia consumption device. You're watching video, you're watching Netflix, you're watching a new uh, Jordan, Michael Jordan show on Netflix, lots of resolution. You're just comfy on the couch. And then all of a sudden your battery starts to dip and you just reach for the base. You don't need to tether to the wall, just reach for the base. And let me show you something wild here, going with the whole versatility conversation. You can attach this thing backwards like this, fold it down like this, and it's your same tablet setup. Whether you put a bowl of cereal in front or you're on the airplane, or like I said, you're on the couch, you wanna keep watching and extend your battery life. The base is feeding power now to the tablet portion and you've got your full horsepower and battery life now available to you. It's really a story of versatility. And then go back to the standard setup and you're back to a laptop mode. As far as transformers are concerned in the two-in-one laptop tablet space, this is, this is the real transformer. I just think it's kind of a cool item to exist in the crowded convertible slash laptop slash tablet space. Head over to YouTube real quick and give you, a little, uh, give you a little sense of how noisy or not noisy the keyboard is. Quiet, is that the word for not noisy? The quick brown fox. This keyboard is great. This is a great laptop keyboard. I am a terrible typer. So if I can type on it, without making many mistakes. Imagine what you could do if you were an actual skilled typer. It's incredible. It's, it's a nice keyboard. Very little flex happening. Feels like you are hitting a sturdy unit when you type on here. Let's test out the audio. Of course, the audio has to be housed in the tablet section because if you pop it off, you need to keep hearing what, you know, what you're listening to, so. OnePlus has been in the news in a big now way. I'm gonna just online, upgrade Twitter the quality phone. here. So OnePlus has been in the news in a big way. This is a 4K video so playing. Buried in the color filters. It has a specific color filter camera mm. that appears to have the potential to see through certain uh, objects. And yeah, look, it's not, it's not the best. Uh, I look at so many pro. You guys know the story. Maybe I give this one a little more of a pass because they've put, they've got, they've had to put the speakers inside the tablet. But even as a tablet, I think the iPad Pro actually sounds better than this. So. I don't know what they have to do. Uh, maybe on a future version, you put a little subwoofer in the base just to get a little low end back. A uh, little consolation prize, you have the headphone jack. The camera, the front facing camera, the video conferencing camera, the more useful of the two cameras for most people on tablets and laptops. And this is the quality you'd be getting if you were having a video conference or a Skype call or something like that. And you can also check the audio out because like I said, Microsoft says that they improved the audio. This is for the person who wants everything in one. That's really what it is. A person who doesn't want to have multiple devices. This is kind of the anti Apple product in the sense that Apple wants to sell you a, a MacBook Pro, a separate tablet, a separate keyboard case. So you have a number of different devices to, to solve your various computing needs. And Microsoft makes products like that too with the other Surface products, but this one is all about one device to rule them all in your life, a thing that can do everything. Now, is it going to be as powerful as the most powerful laptops? No, but it does have an i7, it has fast RAM, and of course it has the dedicated graphics. Is it going to be as portable as some of the standalone dedicated tablet units? No, you're giving up a little on either end in order to have it all in one. This device is, it's like a Swiss army knife. It's like if a laptop tablet situation could be a Swiss army knife. You feel prepared with it. You feel like you can do whatever the modern humans are doing, whether it's sitting back on a couch, whether it's a pen input because you're trying to get flashy and fancy, or whether it's a little bit of gaming or even a little bit of video editing, you could do that on the Surface Book 3. Is it the best at any one thing? Probably not. 
but is it the best when it comes to a little bit of everything? It, it might be. You have the versatility of ports. I mean, what what other unit's gonna let you pop the entire computer off in the display format alone? Which other computer? Where, where are you doing that? Where, where can you do that? 